Hi, my name is John Leonard. I'm a professor in mechanical engineering and a PI here in CSAIL. And welcome to my lab space here, the Marine Robotics Group in Stata Center. And we work on robot navigation, mapping, and autonomy for complex environments. We have a special focus towards ocean environments, so building autonomous underwater vehicles and algorithms to help them make decisions and navigate autonomously. But our work has a more general applicability to all kinds of robots, like self-driving cars, unmanned aerial vehicles, and even robots in space. And so we think about the challenges of how a robot can navigate through the world, collecting sensor data, trying to make sense of the world, building up a model or a representation of the world. And this is difficult because of uncertainty, because of when a robot moves, um, there's uncertainty in its motion. It tries to move a certain distance and direction, but only does so approximately. And when it takes sensor readings from a camera, sonar, a laser scanner, there's always uncertainty in the data. And so I sometimes say, if it weren't for uncertainty, we wouldn't be in business. Uh, what makes our problem challenging is how a robot can try to process large amounts of sensor data to make decisions and operate autonomously and robustly um, with, in the face of lots of, of very challenging, ambiguous sensor data. So one problem in particular that we work on is called SLAM, Simultaneous Localization and Mapping, which is how a robot can concurrently build a map while using that map to navigate. Now, SLAM has been around for a long time as a research problem, and sometimes I joke that I'm still working on my PhD thesis that I started in 1987 in England um, as a grad student at Oxford, but there's still a lot of challenges, and really to me it's about trying to strive towards long-term autonomy. I want a robot that can achieve lifelong learning, so as it operates, it collects more and more data about the world, and it can try to make sense of the world. It can deal with changes in the environment, and maybe even develop models of how things behave, how people um, predict human behavior. And so I, my uh, sort of thesis is that knowing your location, your position, your sort of surroundings, your context, it's a sort of essential sort of precursor for more advanced levels of embodied intelligence. And so knowing your position in the world can be a very important supervisory cue for say learning algorithms to try to process sensor data to better recognize objects uh, and to better navigate through the world. One thing we do here in the lab is we have proxy platforms, so a more conventional wheeled mobile robot that we can use to, to try to test new algorithms for moving through the world and collecting data. Uh, and then what we've shown in the past is transitioning some of the same software onto actual underwater vehicles. So here in the lab we have, you know, um, a bunch of my students uh, have their desks and, and we also have a few places where we, we can do some experiments. So we have a um, we have so a few different things here. This is a, an example of what's called a remotely operated vehicle. Uh, it's called a Blue RV, and this was from a collaboration uh, with the company Schlumberger that we worked with for undersea uh, inspection to support sort of energy applications. And so um, an ROV has a tether, which provides a connection to a human operator, but most of our work targets vehicles without tethers. So this is just a way of having a test bed. Now this vehicle, a few things about it, it has two sonars on it. So these are use sound waves to create pictures, and it has a, also has a, a couple um, conventional cameras in pressure housings. So we've used this vehicle to do sort of inspection in tanks and to test some, say, mapping the seabed uh, off the, in the river and looking for objects like there's a sunken sailboat there, for example. Um, that's a good target. And let's see, if you, uh, in this room, we have a small motion capture system set up in the ceiling just to get ground truth for getting, for tracking uh, the ability to collect sensor data as we go around objects. And so we, um, you're probably familiar with kind of motion capture systems where you can use fiducial markers that can be tracked by the cameras. Now, if you, if you look at robotics today, and there's been tremendous progress, and I'm sort of so delighted to be part of this sort of global robotics community and all the progress the field has made. But it turns out, I think, that positioning and sort of navigation is, is still a challenge in a lot of applications. And in fact, if you see an impressive robot, one thing to do is to look up for the motion camera motion capture cameras, 
because a lot of times, a lot of the uncertainty of positioning has been removed um, with, with, with motion capture. We're simply using it here for ground truth for some experiments. And um, one thing we're doing is uh, just using very simple objects like the Cheez-It box, a can of Spam, uh, to try to create what we call an object-based mapping and navigation system. This is a clear path jackal robot that um, has wheels, we can drive it around, collect data. What we'd like to do is to create a system that can build a representation of the world. We call it semantic SLAM or object-based SLAM. Instead of building a dense, rich 3D point cloud uh, that you might get from a LiDAR sensor or uh, dense stereo vision, we want to be able to use objects as landmarks and detect objects using modern machine learning object recognition systems and to build a sort of um, probabilistic graphical model that contains the locations of the objects as well as the trajectory of the robot. Thanks again for visiting. I feel so fortunate to have this sort of amazing group of 10 students and the opportunity from our sponsors to, to, to investigate some of these really fundamental research questions. I am an optimistic person that I do think robotics technology can really help society, help humanity in the long term and uh, by helping with say aging population, helping people in dangerous, remote, uh, extreme environments. And I think that um, some of these sort of questions of how robots can navigate around the world, understand their world uh, uh, and um, get better over time. That's kind of my sort of dream that we can get create self-improving robots that can, can use their experience uh, to do better and better over time.